Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here. Here is another uh, calculus review uh, test problem. This is on rates of change, tangents, maximums, minimums. This is similar to the 2019 practice exam. Um, it's similar to uh, one of the questions on there. I believe it was like question three or something like that. So let's do it and see what we do. Okay, we have a function here. It says let f be the function defined by, and it's piecewise. Square root of 16 minus x squared for x between negative 4 and 0. And um, over here, negative x plus 4 cosine pi, o, pi x over 2 when x is between 0 and 8. And we have to first find the average rate of change of f on the interval. All right, well, average rate of change should be pretty simple for most of us because the average rate of change just means how does it change on the whole interval. So that means I need f of 8 minus the f of negative 4 all over the 8 minus negative 4. So this is my average. All right, let's work this out. When I try to find f of 8, I'm going to be putting it in here. So this is going to be, let's uh, use the pointer tool. So this is going to be 8 over 2, which gives me 4. So the cosine of 4 pi. So the cosine of 4 pi means I'm going to go around 2 pi and another 2 pi, 4 pi. So that cosine will be 1. And then I multiply it by 4, so that'll give me a 4. And then this will be negative 8 plus that 4. So over here, I end up with negative 8 plus the 4. This is for the f of 8. That's what f of 8 equals. Then for f of negative 4, that would mean I would have to put it in here, uh, this one right here. So this would be negative 4 squared is 16. 16 minus 16 is 0. So that ends up being 0. On the bottom, I would get 8 minus negative 4, which comes out to be 12. So I end up here with negative 4 over 12, which is negative 1 third. On the AP test, leave it like that. Don't simplify. If you simplify, you will get it wrong if you mess up in your simplification. If you simplify, you better, be, better make sure you're simplifying right. Otherwise, just leave it unsimplified, and we're all good to go. Okay, for part B, it says write an equation for the line tangent to the graph at x equals 3. All right, well, we know how to write tangent lines. Again, this is basic, simple stuff that we have learned at the beginning of the year. So the equation of a tangent line, first I need a slope. I also need the y value. I have the x, right? So we have an x, y coordinate. I have the x, 3. I need the y. So let's find f of 3 first. So, okay, so we're going to find f of 3. That means I'm going to be putting that into this part right here. So this equation. So I put that in here. I will get negative 3 plus 4 cosine, and this will be 3 pi over 2. Well, the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is going to be 0. So this ends up being negative 3. All right, so now I need to find the slope. How do I find the slope? Well, I have to take the derivative. So I need f prime of x, but which one do I do? Do I do the top one here, or do I do the bottom one? Well, I'm looking at where 3 is. 3 is not in between negative 4 and 0. It's in between 0 and 8, so I'm going to be taking the derivative of that guy right there. So when I take that derivative, I will get negative 1 plus... This becomes 4 times negative sine pi over pi x over 2 times, now i got to chain rule it, which would be pi over 2. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I need f prime, I need the slope at x equals 3. So this will give me negative 1 plus negative 4 sine of 3 pi over 2, and this is times the pi over 2. So this would reduce with that to give me 2 pi. So negative 1 plus this would be negative um, 2 pi sine 3 pi over 2. And the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So this negative and that negative would give me a positive. So I end up with a slope of negative 1 plus 2 pi. So I've got my slope 
I've got my y coordinate, I've got my x coordinate, I'm just going to put it y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is going to look crazy, it's going to look a little nasty, but it's not bad at all. So y minus y1, we came up with negative 3, so that'll be y plus 3, equals, and this will be the slope, negative 1 plus 2 pi, and then x minus x1 was 3. Leave it like that. Do not try to simplify it. All right, next problem. We have to find the average value on the interval from negative 4 to 8. I'm going to slide this up just a teeny bit like that, just enough so I could see the top over there, the equation still. And here we go. Let's uh, use another color here and find the average value of f on the interval. So... How do we do average value? We know that it's 1 over b minus a from the integral from a to b. In this case, we're going to have 1 over 8 minus negative 4, the integral from, this is negative 4 to 8, of f of x dx. All right, but f of x is a piecewise function. It goes from negative 4 to 0, then 0 to 8. So I have to break this up. So my integral from negative 4 to 8, I'm going to need to break this up to be the integral from negative 4 to 0, and then 0 to 8 because of my piecewise function right here. It's That's the first piece. That's the second piece. Integrate each separately. All right. So let's do this. Okay. So the integral from negative 4 to 0 is going to be the integral from negative 4 to 0 of the square root of 16 minus x squared dx plus the integral from 0 to 8 of negative x plus 4 cosine pi x over 2 dx. Okay, uh, let's take a look. How on earth are we going to integrate this? If I let u equal 16 minus x squared, then I've here, let's just look at this on the side here. If I let u equal the square root of 16, or we'll just say 16 minus x squared, that would mean du equals negative 2x dx, and then I substitute it in, and I still have that x floating around. So that doesn't work. In fact, what I'm going to tell you right now is this sucker is hard to integrate. That thing is pretty tough to integrate. You're going to need like arc sines or arc tangents. Um, but, but we're not going to do that, especially since this is on a non-calculator part of the test. They want you to think, what the heck does this mean? What does it mean if I'm integrating something? I'm taking the area under the curve. So let's break it down to the basics again. If I'm taking the area under a curve, here's my curve. It's 16 minus x squared. Well, that's just y equals six, the square root of 16 minus x squared. y squared plus x squared equals 16. That's a circle with radius 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's this semicircle. It's that top half. And since I'm only going from negative 4 to 0, I'm only concerned with a quarter of a circle. So 1 fourth of a circle, pi r squared, that's going to give me 1 fourth pi times 16, which is 4 pi. This whole thing is pretty simple. It's just 4 pi. If you try to integrate that, you are going to just spin your wheels and it's going to get confusing. So I'm telling you right now, when you see something like that, just go back to the basics. If you're not sure how to integrate it, maybe it's something graphical that you can find a quick equation of, which in this case was a circle, and we found the area of it. I know that's going to be hard to identify. That's going to be a tough one, but that's, that's the way this problem is set up. All right, let me scroll up a little bit, and let's continue on so I have a little bit more room here. On this side, so this will be plus, I can integrate this. And remember, when I get the answer to this integral, I do need to multiply it by 1 12th, right? Because that's the average value. Okay, so let's just not forget that. So over here... I'm going to integrate this, and this will be negative one-half x squared. That's for this part. And then for this part, the integral of cosine would be sine. So I'm going to just do a guess and check method. I would say sine pi x over 2. 
All right, if I take the derivative of that, well, obviously I need a four here because this four was there. If I take the derivative of this, this is cosine pi x over two times pi over two. So I need to get rid of the pi over two, which means I need to multiply this thing right here by two over pi. And that becomes my answer. So let's clean this up, x squared, and this becomes plus eight over pi sine pi x over 2, and these are on the bounds from 0 to 8. All right, when I put in 8 here, I get negative 1 half times 8 squared is 64, and then minus the 0, so this will be 32 negative on this side. Okay, now let's do plus, and let's figure this one out. When I put in 8 over 2, I'm putting it right here, 8 over 2 gives me 4, sine of 4 pi, Think about it, four times around the circle, sine of four pi is going to be zero. And then even when I put in zero, sine of zero is zero. So this whole thing comes out to be zero. That actually comes out pretty nice. So now I've got this four pi minus the 32 plus zero. And then don't forget, you've got the 1 12th out in front of it still. So I'm just going to write this as 1 12th times four pi minus 32. And I'm going to leave it at that. And that is my average value. All right, let's take a look at this last question. On this last question, it says, must there be a value of x which f of x attains an absolute maximum on the closed interval from negative 4 to 8? Justify your answer. So do we have to have an absolute maximum? Well, let's see. What are the conditions? Well, on the interval, to get an absolute maximum, it has to be continuous. If it's not continuous, remember, if you have some sort of curve, oops, some sort of curve from A to B, in order for you to have an absolute maximum somewhere, whether it's at the end point or whether it's somewhere on the graph, whether it's here or at the end point, it has to be continuous. So where is this possibly not continuous from negative 4 to 8? Hmm, at 0. That's where I have a possible discontinuity. That's what I need to test. So let's test this at 0. Okay, so let me recall again. We're going to test it at 0, but let me recall what I just said. For an absolute, for an absolute, oops, for absolute max or min, and whichever one you're looking for, it must be continuous on, technically it should be on the closed interval, but we'll just say on, oh, I'm having technical difficulties here, on the interval. So it has to be continuous. We have a possible discon discontinuity at x equals 0. So we need the limit as x equals 0 from the left, and we need to compare this to the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. We have to test to see if there is a discontinuity here. And these, luckily, we have this equation on the left, 16 minus x squared, which is pretty easy. Plug in 0, you're going to get 16 minus 0, you will get 4. Over here, we've got, on the right side, we've got this equation, which is negative x plus for cosine pi x over 2. If I plug in 0 right here, I'm going to get 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, and this will be 0, so I end up with 4. So this equals 4. So it's continuous on negative 4 to on this closed interval, which we have indicated. So it's continuous on the closed interval, thus by the extreme value theorem. EVT is our extreme value theorem. We must have an absolute maximum. All right. So this is one of those questions that they like to do on AP tests where, okay, some of it is basics, like part A, part B, kind of basic type problems. Part C really got you you know, you could probably do the second integral, but this first one really got the wheels uh, turning and turning and trying to figure out how the heck do you get that because this is too tough to integrate. And then they come up with the theory part, part D, 
and um, you just have to understand IBT. You just have to remember all the stuff that will allow you to find an absolute maximum. The way they, they would break this down, I think they would give you two points here. They would give you this four points, but if you, you, if you knew how to do the second half, you would probably get two points if you just couldn't get that other half. And if, but as long as you knew that you had to do this plus this, and you gave this part, but you couldn't get this part, you would probably get most of the points. And then they would probably give you um, two points for the for this one right here, finding the tangent line, and then probably one point there. So those would be your nine points. Anyway, hopefully this helped. I know this is a, a tough one, but um, keep practicing these and just remember uh, some of these tricks that we talked about in this problem. So thanks for watching. Make sure you uh, leave that like and subscribe, uh, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.